Next guest warns Putin's a bully who will keep pushing Biden to get what he wants. Kitty McFarland served as deputy national security advisor under President Trump, and she joins us now. Katie, how are you? I'm just great. And congratulations, Thank Rachel. You. I'm so proud of you. Thank you know, you. you've got a family, you've got a great marriage, and you've got a great career, and you've got two terrific co-anchors. <laughs> <better in> life. <laughs> You're the best. So we had to have you on to talk about this summit because no one knows better than you um, what to do in these situations. So you say there's this golden opportunity for Biden. What is that opportunity, and do you think he's going to take it? Well, I don't think he's going to take it, but here's the golden opportunity. You know, he's going to present himself to the European leaders as, hey, I'm not Donald Trump. This is great. And then he's going to, for substance, he's going to say, let's all worry about climate change. The golden opportunity is between what the Russians have done to us and to the Europeans, and particularly what the Chinese have done to us and to the Europeans and to the world with the coronavirus. This is the opportunity to say to those European leaders, all right, we need a united front. We need to together stand up to the Russians over hacking, over the ransomware attacks, over what they're doing in Ukraine. And as the really important thing is we have to join together to stand up to China, not just to discover the origins of, of COVID, but to stand up to China on trade issues, intellectual property. Because here's the thing, <clears throat> the Europeans have always been reluctant to do any of that, particularly Germany. So the question I have is not so much Biden-Putin, but how about Biden and the Europeans, particularly um, the Germans? But I have a question about Biden-Putin, KT. I am fascinated by this because, yeah. look, behind every conspiracy theory, behind every news cycle over the past four or five years has lurked Vladimir Putin. Uh, his relationship, yeah. his style, his relationship with the American government, with Donald Trump, his style. You describe, as we, 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 we said in the intro there, him as a bully. So when you see these two men sit down together, Vladimir Putin and Joe Biden, how do you think it will go? How will those personalities mesh? I know they know each other, but how, how will that negotiation play out? Well, here's what's going to happen. I mean, Putin is looking at Biden and is saying, how, how far can I push you? What can I get away with? Let me look at what I've already gotten away with. I've already gotten away with massing troops on the Ukraine border and kicking the Americans out of the Black Sea. I've already gotten away with ransomware attacks on American critical infrastructure and industry. I've already gotten away with potentially election hacking. And I've already gotten away with a number of other things that you probably not, you and I probably don't know about because they're way behind the curtain. So Putin has got to be looking at Joe Biden to say, you know, you're not standing up on me for any of these things. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep pushing in the cyber technology area. I'm going to keep pushing militarily because I don't think you've got it in you. Now, what is Biden going to be doing? Well, I think so far Biden has talked a good game about Putin. He's called him a killer, but he's done nothing to stand up to the Russians. In fact, at every opportunity, he's caved. KT McFarland, you know what you're talking about. You're the perfect guest this morning. So thank you so much for being here. And we agree, Rachel is the best. So, thank <laughs> Thanks, KT. Much, Thanks, KT. That was so sweet <laughs> thank of you. Thank you. Thanks.